Well, hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We are here on the live. Uh, we may be doing a uh, little live Q&A at the end of this, but wanted to get some stuff done because I got some other stuff that I'm uh, uh, possibly halfway wanting to uh, get done outside of recording and putting stuff out. So I, I, I want to I have a few topics that I did want to hit on and discuss some kind of things that that's all circling on circling around and uh i also wanted to kind of give some clarity to a few issues and i also wanted to highlight something that i think is is pretty cool pretty important um first of all i want to thank everyone who has been tuning into the live chats i'm thinking about going more lives on youtube because i literally can just sit here and talk and say what i think and let things go and let things run uh, I know we had the Truex versus Larson deal recently, and really, Larson did nothing wrong, but it was for entertainment purposes to say that he did. It's fun to get people all riled up and excited and things. So we're going to try to do this live thing uh, right off the bat. Lighting's kind of is what it is here in the daytime. But a um, few topics, a few things to discuss right off the top of the bat. That One of the things that I thought a lot of people were interested in seeing and interesting in uh, understanding, it seems like, because a lot of people don't understand what actually happened. And this was this video that was going around of uh, Danny Dietrich. It was happening on Facebook mainly. It was a video of Danny Dietrich getting uh, a little upset at Anthony Macri. Uh, we'll play a little bit of the of the video here if we can. Uh, and, and 357 World of Dirt actually did post this. And you could see a video of Dietrich running up to the car, yelling at Macri. Macri's like, what the hell do you want me to do? Why are, you know, I mean, you could kind of read the caption there. You shouldn't have been he there anyhow. Um, somebody was yelling at Danny Dietrich. You shouldn't even effing been there. Uh, this was like a little, like I said, 20 second cut where Dietrich's like, oh, you destroyed all these cars and Macri and all this. It's, it's just going down. Here on the inside of the racetrack. Now, some people in the comment section were trying to be like, they were like, where did this happen? How did this happen? And some people were saying Williams Grove. That's not where this incident occurred between uh, Danny Dietrich and uh, Anthony Macri. Where this incident actually occurred was at BAPS uh, the night before uh, Williams Grove. It actually happened at BAPS. There was a race over there, a pretty good race. It was actually broadcasted on a uh, local, regional uh, streaming service at BAPS, SprintCarUnlimited.tv is where you can check it out. I'm actually looking at this on SprintCarUnlimited.tv on Facebook. Um, Justin Peck was leading it early in this one. Uh, Danny Dietrich had the initial lead. Uh, they had a caution late in the race. And on this restart is where what Danny Dietrich is upset about occurred. Um, and we can look at it again if you want. Uh, and, and, and Dietrich and Peck were kind of the battle of the night. Macri had been moving up, but it looks like, honestly, in this situation, that Dietrich just didn't get a good start. Kind of like this Martin Truex, uh, Kyle Larson deal. It's like, you know, Martin Truex was just a little late to turn into a stall, and Larson had nowhere to go. And that's, I, honestly, from what I'm seeing here, it looks like Dietrich just kind of, Halfway lagged on the start, maybe was up in the dust, into the debris, you know, I mean, the car just really doesn't go, it's almost, it, the, it, car, the nose looks like it kind of falls down right at this juncture, maybe it had something happen under the hood where it just didn't take off, but it looks like the car almost dies, it's, it's weird how this looks, if you pay attention to Dietrich's car, off of four here, he jumps on the throttle, but like right there, it's like the car just doesn't really go. And Macri had nowhere to go. Of course, Macri started right behind him. And he just had nowhere to go. I, I mean, I understand Dietrich's upset. And, and, and let's be honest with Danny Dietrich. He's one of these guys who, you know, is working on his car. He, he sells race car parts. He knows how much this stuff costs. He puts in the time, the effort uh, in the shop. You know, some of these guys don't do that. Danny Dietrich's, you know, he, he's known for being one of the self-made guys of the of, uh, the PA area. So when he sees his car go around and then Casey Kane and all these cars pile in here, Michael Millard, Facebook Live is definitely sad about that. The iRacer community has his, their hearts broken. I mean, 
this is something that Danny Dietrich's going to be upset about. And so this is the incident that everyone is wondering what happened. But really, if you look at Dietrich's car here, it looks like it dies right there to me. It looks like it just loses loses forward momentum for just a split second. And when you're stacked up on these restarts with open-wheel race cars, what are you supposed to do? I mean, the contact's made right here. I mean, when the when the contact is actually made between Dietrich and Macri right there, I mean, is this a Delaware double foul restart? What what happened here? Because I see Selzy and Dietrich pretty much uh, nose to nose. They are parallel right there. So I think this was a combination of a bad restart and possibly something going south on Dietrich's car. Because to me, at that point right there, the car just looks like it loses speed. And and this is what happens. And then obviously Dietrich's upset because he got tagged. Something happened. His car's destroyed. Um, Dietrich's known for being a selfish kind of guy. If it works out for him, he's happy. If it doesn't work out for him, he's on Twitter bashing tracks. You know, you know. I mean, that's just what happens with Danny Dietrich. But anyways, that's that's kind of the situation that occurred right there. And Macri's like screaming at him, "What the f do you want me to do?" And it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense as to as to why uh, Macri's stating his case. You know, based on this replay here, there's really not a lot that Macri could have done or anticipated to do differently. Um, just a bad set of circumstances, kind of like Truex. I, I mean, it comes across as a Truex situation to me uh, because he's just, it, it looks like Dietrich was just a little late to the party on, on getting going there, and Macri had nowhere to go. And and I, I would almost suspect a possible issue under the hood or, or something mechanical because I think, of that, I think that that car... Uh, kind of loses momentum, loses speed out of nowhere. We'll check comments real real quick and see what some of you guys are saying. Hold on, we got to get these up here. Um, let's see some comments here. There's not too many people here in the live stream. Uh, Danny and his fans get butt hurt over the smallest of things. Word has it, Double D's motor stumbled, likely low on fuel. Uh, Double D sits to pee. Well, that would be something that an Ohio dirtbag would say. I'm just saying. But it is very interesting how that did work out, and I do suspect something happened uh, with D, uh, uh, Double D's uh, motor there because that's what it looked like to me. That's how it came across to me. Uh, regardless, interesting situation. The video didn't make its rounds on 357's World of Dirt, and I noticed the confusion on where or when this happened, and, and there's no confusion for some of those who need to know, it was that BAPS. And you could see this highlight video, watch it over and over on uh, SprintCarUnlimited.tv. Moving on to the next topic that I actually did want to talk about. Uh, there was racing with the World Outlaws outside of this event at the Williams Grove Speedway. And Lance DeWeese picked up the win, 75000 one day show. He was apparently extremely happy. But something that did happen that's pretty crazy is that Brad Sweet did not finish the race. And I believe I saw a stat over the weekend where he had completed 5,000 laps of A-Main racing action without a DNF or something like that. It was insane, his streak that he had. Um, and I even heard some people saying that somebody sabotaged him in the work area, but I, 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 I that's stretching it. Illuminati is real, but I don't know if that's happening. Um Although Brad's starting high limit and there's all this speculation, blah, blah, blah. Are they going to start treating him unfairly in this championship in instance? Poss I, I don't know. I didn't see that, but some people are saying that. Regardless, the championship battle is now tight as a mofo. David Gravel ran very well in PA. Uh, and now we're looking at a championship points battle over here. Uh, this is on the World of Outlaws Facebook page. Uh, 16 points between Brad Sweet and David Gravel. I mean, this is personally the, the closest I've seen a championship battle go into the final weekend at Charlotte. This is very interesting, very intriguing. David Gravel and Brad Sweet, um, two of the best out there. David Gravel recently seems to have the momentum on his side. He's been running extremely well. He won at I-80, uh, was on the podium at Lakeside, and, and ran well at Williams Grove. I would say that the momentum is on David Gravel's side. Now, can he can he can he get it done? It would obviously be a big deal for David Gravel, uh, who's already won the Knoxville Nationals, had a bunch of success uh, driving the Todd Quaring machine, one of the best promoters in the business. 
Um, it would be a big victory for that team, for David Gravel, for Cody the Crew Chief, Chief Trey, everyone that's involved in that whole situation. Zach, I think I got his name right finally with the with the beautiful hair and 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 eyebrows. But it would be a huge deal for that team to get that done. And 16 points is not a lot, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't like the cup racing where it's one position per point. It's a little bit different of a structure. So this can swing in one night, one race. I mean, qualifying is going to be a big deal now. Everything is going to be equated into this race for the championship with World Outlaw Sprint Car Series. This is extremely close. And, and, and I, I really can't stress on how interesting this chance we don't need to chase i think it's funny how in dirt racing we don't need to chase we don't need this we don't need that to have exciting championship racing action we just got raw racing in dirt and i think that's why a lot of people are starting to tune into it start to like it and start to enjoy it um one thing that did come out of the weekend outside of this championship chase situation uh was the bridge apparently the bridge at williams grove is going out and everyone and their mama was taking pictures with it. I mean, you had uh, Loose Video was taking videos of the bridge. Uh, Michael Millard was taking pictures with the bridge for some reason. He's only been there for a year and a half or whatever. Uh, but apparently the bridge is out. Everybody's making this news that the bridge is out. But a lot of people are telling me that there's no, like, official word from the track. And I saw this all over Facebook. There's no official word from the track that the bridge is coming out. I've heard that Eastern Motorsports Museum has announced how they're taking it in and it's going to be a part of their... I've heard all these outside sources explain it's coming out, where it's going, all very explained in detail. But I, I agree with a lot of the comments and posts that I saw. I haven't seen a Williams Grove actual Speedway announcement Ladies and gentlemen, last year of the bridge, we will be removing it by the end of the year or or last race this last weekend, last race for the bridge. I, no one at Williams Grove Speedway or .com or anything like that is officially putting a statement out. Now, the word actually out there is, is that it's going to the museum and there's a lot of speculation and even some reports of people that are going to, or they are going to put in a bigger, better bridge that's not as low because there is has been some safety hazards w with this bridge. Cars have hit this bridge before, so it is it is dangerous. And maybe some insurance companies out there, you know, push the button on its age for one because metal, I mean, and iron and all this does deteriorate over time. So the insurance companies finally came out there and said, "Oh, y'all race dirt tracks? What's that? Oh, cool! Wow! Oh, wait." Give me some money if you want to use that damn thing. Thank you for introducing me to dirt track racing. The greedy insurance companies. By the way, the insurance companies, the number one funders of 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 of, of politicians in Washington, the number one funders of all these legislative uh, this and that. I mean, they are so involved in running this world. It is insane how involved insurance companies are. Part of the free money, I make a joke all the time, there's only two kind of free money, or free monies, and that's tax money and gambling. Insurance, pretty close. You're going to pay me in case something happens. If nothing happens, then I'm not going to pay you. So, so anyways, regardless, that's the situation with the bridge that I'm hearing. But once again, no one has officially put anything out on this. It hasn't been like officially put out, officially announced by a track. There's been official announcement for... Announcements from the museum, official announcements from people who are well connected within the sport, but there has not been official announcements from Williams Grove Speedway. And maybe it happened in the last 20 minutes or, or this morning and I just didn't see it, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it at all. Regardless, let's look in the chat. Maybe somebody in the chat has a little bit more information. I'm not sure real quick. Let's see. No, nothing. No one in the chat. Post the part where he kicks the front wing in on Macri's car. That's assault of a vehicle. I'm not going to do that. Ty Kitt said, what, what's up, ladies? That is pretty sad, disgusting. I guess we will move on to the next topic. And that is funny. He says, what's up, ladies? And I did want to point something out before we wrap it up here. This is not going to be a very long live. We're going to be doing segments and stuff like that. Put this out in different segments. This is just a quick live video to get things out because I can record and talk for hours and hours and hours instead of hit here, record, edit, record, edit. I can just record this live and go on the next. But regardless, when you come over here to the late model world, it does have to do with what's up, what's up ladies. And obviously, for those who haven't paid attention, uh, 
Dennis Erb Jr. did lock up the World of Outlaw Late Model Series championship over the weekend. Now, a lot of people could uh, joke. I mean, a lot of people could really joke and say, all right, Dennis Erb Jr., you're the World of Outlaws champion, but who the hell did you beat? You beat two rookies, Max Blair and Tanner English, for your championship? Is that impressive? I mean, obviously, Brandon Shepard was there to start the year, your, your main competition, but he dropped off eventually. So a lot of people would, or actually switched to Lucas Oil, a lot of people would say they're not surprised by this. A lot of people would say this was the, uh, the and this is a joke in the late model community, that the World of Outlaw Late Model Series is, is 1C. You know, 1A being Lucas Oil, 1B now apparently being the XR Super Series, and and one some people would say 1C is the Flow Racing Night in America, and then 1D is the World of Outlaw Late Model Series. But those are not considered XR. I, I guess you wouldn't consider XR and Flow nationally touring series. You might consider XR national touring series because of the amount of races they have in comparison to the Flow Series. Um, and they do have weekend events. But when it comes to Lucas Oil or the uh, World of All 8 Miles, there's just no comparison. Dennis Herb Jr. is picking up this championship by beating Tanner English and Max Blair, two rookies, first time on the series. Ryan Gustin is in the series as well, but he's still in a developmental stage getting into the super late model world. He's coming on strong here late in the year, and he's definitely a dangerous heavy hitter to be contended with. But it's his second year, you know, full-time late models on the tour. Uh, he, he could be a very big threat very soon, but it, it's still his second year on the tour running full-time uh, full time in late models. So at the end of the day, the championship to me is not that big of a deal. My freaking phone is just blowing up. I don't know why people want to keep on blowing me up. I mean, obviously I'm very important, but I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I think it's a big deal to win the World of All Late Model Championship Series. I'm not saying that, but what I'm also saying is like, this isn't a surprise, but there is sometimes glory in any situation. And I would say the glory in this situation is we are making real woman, real female history. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, this is what I'm actually talking about. Of course, Dennis Herb Jr., for those who know it or don't know it, he runs up and down the road running full-time in this late model with Heather. Now, who is Heather? Heather, in fact was the first ever female last year at the banquet that I was actually at. I should have took a picture of this. At the World of Outlaw uh, World of Outlaw World Racing Group banquet, she was the 2021 Crew Chief of the Year, Heather Lynn. She's and she's amazing. It's him it's her and Dennis running up and down the road. And she won the Crew Chief of the Year last year for the World of Outlaw Late Model Series and the only woman to ever win the award. Now, if that was the case, if she was the only woman to ever win the award for crew chief of the year, that also means that now she has become the first ever crew chief to win the World of Outlaw Late Model Series Championship. And now when I when I point this out, how this is real woman history, what's occurring here with Heather, she's not some Instagram girl trying to get into a truck. She's not some girl who's connected to this guy, got with that guy, and, and, and this sponsor had a night with her, and now she's in Xfinity. She's not somebody, all these other females out there in, in certain segments of motorsports, she's doing real woman stuff here. You know, this is support, this is a, a role, this is merit-based She's getting attention from me and attention from the World of Outlaws for her abilities, her merit. She didn't post an Instagram picture to get some fame. She didn't narc on some guy to get some fame. She didn't say this or say that or or, or manipulate this or manipulate that. She earned everything that she's gotten here through putting in the work. Which we don't get that in racing a lot. You know, merit is one of those deals that doesn't really matter. It's how much money you got, your last names, all this other stuff. So I think the biggest deal here is is this is one of the, the realest people in motorsports and one of the realest women that we should be celebrating and idolizing more than these freaking Instagram models who want to be a race car driver. That's what I think. 
These are the people that need to be celebrated. Normal, regular people who are doing great things based on their abilities. Now, there's some of those Instagram girls that can drive race cars and probably deserve to, to be where they are in some weird world, but more than likely, most of them, and we see it on the asphalt side of things, don't deserve to be where they are and are getting too much credit for not doing a damn thing. Whereas you got someone like this running up and down the world of the super late model community, which is almost hard for the regular man to do. And I, I'm not going to come at this like men and women are equal. Okay, they are equal, but that, let's just say, you know, that men have a little bit more experience in, in just running up and down the road in the dirt track racing world. There are some females out there who support their men who race, work t-shirt trailers in the sprint car community. That's great. That's awesome. That's amazing. But this is next level. This is real woman stuff, you know. This is tough stuff that she's doing out there. Have you ever worked? Have you ever went to a super late mall race and watched tires get made and grooved out? It, it, it's a it's a nine a.m. to like three four in the afternoon job, and that and that that's all day long busting ass. So this is really the 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 shining diamond in the dirt of this entire Dennis Herb Jr winning the World Outlaw Late Model Series championship situation is Heather now not only being the rain, or not only being the reigning crew chief of the year from 2021 but now I and the first one to receive this award but also now being I, I I would have to guess if she was the first ever crew chief now being also the first ever woman to win the World of Outlaw championship and I think that these type of accomplishments by the female communities are the types of accomplishments that deserve that notoriety, credibility, recognition that doesn't even com come close in comparison to the Instagram models that want to drive race cars. Those are getting the way more attention where I think something like this needs to get more attention and more respect. You know, attention, respect, I don't know, weigh it out there for a second. But anyway, that's my thoughts on that. We'll look at the, the, the chat just a second. Um... You have a few people in here. Uh, no tea for Chaz today. No, hold on. Let's see here. Since you, the video on Facebook Messenger, somebody said we will see when the Grove... Okay, they're talking about the bridge still. Insurance is a big scam. Max Max Blair isn't a slouch. Not hating on Max Blair at all. Uh, just simply saying that Dennis Herb Jr. beat a rookie in Max Blair and a rookie in Tanner English to win this championship. Not diminishing what he did. Just simply saying... Anyone in the world could have picked that. When when Brandon Shepard fell off the World Outlaw Late Model Tour, it was over. Everybody kind of knew Dennis Herb Jr. was going to win that championship. Or, or they were hoping that Ryan Gustin could show that uh, domination that he showed in the Modifieds for years. But Gustin's just still a little bit new into the situation. So I, I, I think next year you could see that being an issue. But I, I just think Dennis Herb Jr. winning it is not a big surprise. But I do think that something that needs to be uh, shined a light on and in, in, in what the accomplishment of that did do is Heather and uh, potentially being the first ever female to win and I'm pretty sure she is the, the only female to ever win a World of Outlaw Late Model Series championship uh, you'll get over it they said the same BS about poor and removing the old covered grandstand somebody's getting mad if they get rid of the bridge they might as well close the track they need to replace it with something new. If they do get rid of that bridge, they need to replace it with a new bridge. It's kind of like um, a symbol. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the arch in, in, in St. Louis. It's, it's, it's kind of like the, the bridge in San Francisco. It is an iconic thing that Williams Grove had. And if you're going to take it, take down something old, you got to put up something new. Now, a lot of people are critical of Williams Grove because they haven't invested a, a lot of money into the track like Port Royal has. Port Royal has been known for putting money into that racetrack. Lincoln's been doing upgrades. BAPS has been doing upgrades. All these different tracks in PA are doing all these upgrades and, and everything, trying to make a name for themselves. And a lot of people are being critical of Williams Grove, saying they've already made their name and they're not putting anything back in the track and they're just pocketing all the money. So if you want to shut these naysayers up that are saying this and you're kind of doing the actions previous in, in years past that support those uh, accusations, if you want to shut them up, 
If you're going to take down this iconic bridge, build a really nice new one. And if you don't, more people are going to start going to Port Royal. You're going to lose respect once again. Respect's a huge deal. And I think that that's a, uh, a situation where, where Williams Grove needs to put up another bridge. Uh, we had one um, hidden comment Greg, uh, by Jesse Weaver. Greg hit a solid reinforced corrugation wall. Drivers know not to do stupid crap around the bridge. It has been hit many times, has... This uh, put people away back in the day, and it still stays. So uh, I, I still think that the bridge needs to be replaced. We are reading some of the live comments. That's pretty much all I have to say today. Uh, I was going to give a little bit of a, a, a shout-out to uh, the Short Track World Championship that's actually happening this uh, weekend. World Short Track Championship schedule. This is basically the only thing I can compare this to that's happening in Charlotte is like the Tulsa shootout for like local divisions. Uh, 604 late models, 602 late models, um, UMP modified. Sorry, let me get it over here. UMP modifieds, pro modifieds, monster mini stocks. Uh, that might be worth seeing. Uh, Hornets, sportsman modifieds. It's a 602 modifieds from the Northeast. Thunder Bombers, pro stocks. Those things are pretty badass and street stocks. So apparently there's around 400 cars entered into this event. This is uh, October 27th through the 29th this weekend at Charlotte. It will be live on Dirt Vision. Uh, 400 cars, the local working man kind of classes that are happening. Um, of course, they're they're doing huge in, uh, pit entry fees. Well, actually, that's not bad. Uh, pit passes for three days, 90 bucks. That's not bad. That's really not that bad of a price, to be honest. Uh, for something of this magnitude and this big. Um, uh, it, it looks like you do get a, a tow vehicle included with your uh, entry. So, anyways, uh, the schedule is very interesting. It looks like they start around 9 a.m. every single day. So, very Tulsa shootout-esque, uh, this uh, World Short Track Championship. Anyway, back to the chat. We'll do a chat for the next 5 to 10 more minutes, and then we'll... Um, move on and, and close this whole whole thing down just wanted to do a quick little live during the day hopefully it'll get some uh, views get some attention i'm trying to line up a few talk shows right now around the world of outlaw uh championship battle that's going on we, we, we got a lot of different things going on um uh let's see world of outlaw better start putting up better money yes they need to start putting up better money if they don't put up better money the high limit series will not destroy the world of outlaws the world of outlaws will destroy the world of outlaws and, and really, they have all the power here. I feel like we're in a, a horrible relationship, and this person feels disrespected, and they are just mad, and they feel like whatever they have is going to be taken away from them, when really they control all the power on if it's going to be taken away or not. They just have to produce a better effort and, and keep it from going away. Uh, Richard Bishop said, what's up? I'm just tuning in. What's happening? Well, we talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, and we're doing the live chat right now. Probably about to shut it down here. I was going to say five minutes, but we ain't got too many people in here right now. Uh, if you want to send a super chat, live chat, that'll be that'd be awesome. It helps support the channel. Also, there's a little bar, I believe, that says join that the, the memberships of the channel. That's a big deal. That's a lot uh, of, of help. I might drop that price. I believe it's nine ninety nine a month. I think I could do it down to $1.99. I think a lot of people would enjoy and jump on board for that. Um, so we'll see. We got to keep this thing going. I got to keep putting out content we got to keep doing uh, good things uh and and putting stuff out every day and, and maybe more some some more of these live chats would be fun they just got to be logical you know so i'm probably going to work on a new song might have some new music coming out very soon so hopefully a lot of people will enjoy that uh but we are not drunk right now we are not drinking the tea uh actually we are drinking tea we're drinking chai tea coffee it's a little mix that i do with uh chai tea mix with some coffee and some uh i hate to say this some snickers flavored uh coffee creamer it is actually unbelievably good unbelievably good uh but it looks like that's gonna be uh it for the show i will be taking this video breaking it down in the segments posting each segment separately onto the channel uh so that people can tune into their individual uh pieces that they may have liked may have wanted to hear more about um, let's see where we're at right now on the live stream. We are just right in 
to the 30 minute mark. So that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, literally, three, two, one, we are at the 30 minute mark. So maybe a little 30 minute live show every day. Take the live show, break them all down into different segments. Uh, we'll do a, a little, I see some more live chats that I might want to answer. Um, Chaz, will you be in Charlotte? Sorry, it looked like the comments didn't come up. Uh, Chaz, will you be in Charlotte for the finals? I don't know yet. I got to make it viable. If we can get support, sponsor, somebody to take me or help me come down there, I, I, I don't know. It's a very long drive from where I'm located currently. So if we can get some support, get some people to send in some super chats, get some people to join the channel, keep this thing going, make it viable, help pay for some gas, hotels, this and that and the other, then we'll go. If we don't do that, then we'll be right here every single night for the World Finals talking about it, possibly doing some call-ins with some of the drivers and their crew chiefs, stuff like that. So that could be just just as fun as going to the Charlotte event. You know, that could be just as enjoyable sitting here and doing some extracurricular coverage live uh, while the event's going on with all the people watching from home. And that could be just as entertaining, save a lot of money for me, especially traveling we could do, sit here, do super chats, do all this interactive stuff live, whereas if I'm at the track, we can't really do that. So that sounds a little more fun to me. Um, who do you think? Who do you think? Si who do you think sign for Outlaws next year? Interesting. That's that's an interesting way to put it. Who do you think sign for Outlaws next year? I think that there are toss ups with Sheldon Hodenschild's crew. I would be surprised. Um, I'm hearing rumblings in the background that Shark Racing is on the edge of going in or not, and I'm not talking about as far as them wanting to or not. I'm hearing that there's some uh, behind-the-scenes uh, situations going on there uh, with with different members of the crews, different things that everybody wants to do within the crew. Uh, obviously, sponsorship's a big deal, too. I don't know the entire situation. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes down. Uh, I, I think you'll definitely see David Gravel back on the tour Tony Stewart, you never know what he wants to do. Obviously, Shots has been pretty critical of the Outlaws here in the last month, especially when the, when the Outlaws were at Williams Grove and tried to race on the on the sloppy track. A lot of people were critical of that situation. Um, but I, I think Shots is a ride-or-die outlaw guy. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And the Outlaws are going to either accept some changes or say, no, we're standing our ground and, and kill themselves, I think. That's what will happen if they try to go that situation. Uh, Veloc Speed Shop says, what are we going to get the Chaz's take on this sweet gravel situation? We already talked about that. Um, and maybe that's a sign. I need to cut this off, shut this down right now, go back, cut all these different segments out, post them out so y'all can go watch one to two to four minute videos of all the topics that we covered today. I just wanted to do this live, get some live chat interaction in here, and that way I could cover all these topics in one long video, then go out and, and, and segment them all up. So people can watch and listen. Be sure to join the channel. Be sure to comment. Be sure to stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe. And we will have probably, uh, well, we have like four different videos. Four videos, yeah. It looks like we're going to have about four to five videos coming out here throughout the day from this live chat. So you can go and get the opinions and thoughts of, of what I have on each of these uh, different topics. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. If you do join the support with the uh, Venmo or PayPal links, we will instantly put your name up at the top right of all videos not the top videos but also the production videos that i do music videos you'll be in the end stuff like that so be sure to join the support the paypal venmo, venmo stuff helps but also join in the channel if you could join that channel i think it's like 9.99 right now i'll set up another payment level so it's not that expensive expensive that is kind of expensive 9.99 a month it really it really effing ain't sorry it really ain't that expensive but for the sprint car community that everybody's being critical of, I guess it is. You know, late models will pay, sprint car guys won't. I mean, that's what that's what I've heard. That's what people are saying. That's what people are telling me. They say, stop covering sprint cars. Those fans are horrible. They don't pay. They don't help. They don't support their sport. They don't support the media. That I've been told so many times to just get the hell away from the sprint car community. And I did late model stuff, and, and it, it's, it's half true. I, it, unfortunately, it's half true. But I love sprint car racing. I want to talk about it. Not everyone in sprint car racing is like that. There's always... A diamond in the dirt. So, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time. We are. I said I would be here for five more minutes. Maybe this is what we're going to do. 30-minute live show every day. Talk, talk about your topics and do a five-minute little read the chat, react type of deal and, and close it out every time. 
It's the Damian Gardner winning the USAC CRH uh, every year. We're closing out in three, two, one. We will catch you next time. What's up, my Drupa? Tommy Fast from Roy City. You going to be at Devil's Bowl? Unfortunately, as it looks like right now, I don't think so. I hate to say that, but I think that's the case. We may just sit here and talk about it with everybody at the home. That's what, what may happen. But I am thinking I'm going to Dallas here later in the year, just not for the non-wing show for Devil's Bow. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But we will get down there. We will get down, down there eventually. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time. Why why do you always stir crap up, Chaz? See, this is this is this is the idiocracy that people have in their lives. It's so sad. So so pathetic. So disgusting. And his last name is Thompson. Jeez. Maybe maybe if I get married, I'll take on the woman's name, especially if if I'm gonna have to be related to Garrett over here. Anyways, kiss my